Kojo upon Kroma, on Saturday, the 8th of February, 2020, Mr. Kojo upon Kroma, the Minister for Information, assembled a group of journalists from both NDC and MPP affiliated media. Please, viewers, let's, let's, let's uh, remember what he's saying. He says, Kojo upon Kroma assembled people from NDC and MPP media. Information Minister assembled NDC and MPP media. Uh, at the Forest Hotel in Dodoa, the Forest Hotel, I know there is a hotel in Dodoa, to discuss a strategy to bring me, Kwabna Frimpon Boateng, down. Whilst they were there, a journalist from among the group called a friend of mine, also a journalist, and informed him, that the, and informed him about the plot that was being hatched against me. Hmm. <laughs> I don't believe this part, and I'll tell you why. Kojo Ponkroma is information minister. So he's an official government appointee, information minister. P -p 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 Professor Fumabati alleges that Kojo Ponkroma sits in a, a hotel in Dodoa with NDC media and MPP media, and he tells them that, let us go and pull Fumabati Boatin down. Which information minister would do this? <laughs> I don't believe it. It didn't, it didn't happen. It won't happen. You bring NDC media. Now, if Kojo Pankoma wants to do something, that's not how he'll do it. He's not going to have a meeting at Forest. No, 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 no. He's going to send a text to somebody and send a text, Charlie, what we're going to do, Charlie. Is that, uh, yeah, that's how they, they talk among themselves and they decide that, Charlie, what's the plan? This is the thing. Okay, so how do we execute? You will not know. You, they don't even talk normal. They talk in code. When they, they mention somebody's name as, uh, what about Kofi? The person may not be Kofi. It's some other person. So they don't do, I mean, this is, even a Second World War, information people don't do that. They want to bring you down. They are not going to have a meeting and with NDC media there. This is the government's information minister. It's not true. This part there, I don't... Maybe Kojo Pankuma was against him. I won't know. I don't know. I, I have no idea. But I'm just saying that, just interrogating this narrative, you, can, you, should, you should tell that it's not... So let's, let's start again. Just let, let's start again. That's what I talk about. Journalism is not about camera, it's not hiding. Just look at the story, interrogate it. It will come out. You see, the red flags will just be popping out like that. You don't have to have had a camera to record anybody. Just read it. It will come out. Let's read it. Kojo Opon Kuma on Saturday, the 8th of February. We have to actually check where Kojo Opon Kuma was on the Saturday, the 8th of February. But anyway, a few days to Valentine, though. Remember that. Yeah, and he's a young man, so I'm sure he was thinking about Valentine. Mr. Kojo Pongkruma, the Minister for Information, assembled a group of journalists from NDC and MPP affiliated media at the Forest Hotel in Dodoa to discuss a strategy to bring me, Kojo Frimpo Mboatin, down. But if he wants to bring you down, why would he assemble NDC media there? They would go and say that it was Kojo Pongkruma who said we should. Yeah, I mean, it, it will come out. Why would he? He wouldn't, he wouldn't do that. Whilst they were there, that's what he said, a journalist called from among the group called a friend of mine, also a journalist, and informed him about the plot. Now, this is where the problem is. So, it is possible that somebody called from Pompo Boatin. It's very possible. It's very, it's, it's very, very possible. That somebody called him and said, Chief, they are plotting against you. But that's where the problem is. Maybe that person was just throwing a hoax at him. He doesn't understand how the diabolic works. So, he thinks that, no, no, no. Somebody can just make a call. And, and viewers, you have to believe it. In this our industry, it happens all the time. Somebody can just make a call and say that, uh, the other day, during the uh, Nigerian elections, somebody sent me a photograph of uh, Good Luck Jonathan and President Mahama sitting together with Good Luck Jonathan uh, telling President Mahama that why do you want to contest elections again? And they sent it to me and urged me to use it on TV that day. I don't know who they were. The people sent things to me. I don't know their number. It just comes. So I looked at it. I said, ah, this thing. So I sent it to my people. I said, check, let's see. I do not think that Good Luck Jonathan Knowing his relationship with President Mahama, given the circumstances of President Mahama preparing to run for 2024, and President Mahama being selected by, is it ECOWAS or AU, to come and observe the Nigerian election, that in the public glare like that, good luck, Jonathan will tell him that why are you running for president? It's okay to me. It should occur to anyone. Why would good luck, Jonathan, do that? If he wants to talk to President Mahama about election, he'll talk to him in the, in the quiet. He won't say it there. He knows him very well. He has his number. He has his WhatsApp number. He's not going to sit with him and say, hey, Mr. President, why are you running for... No, no, no. That, so as soon as I saw it, it raised a red flag. Now, when you see this, it should raise a red flag. So the problem Professor Mahama is having is this person who called him, 
The one who called and said, that was a, 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 a prank call. It was a prank call. Nothing was happening. I guess. I'm guessing. But I think that my guess is correct. Nothing was happening. The guy called and said, Prof, do you know what? So he called a journalist and said, tell your friend that they have met a, a, a forest hotel at Dodoa and they are planning against him. So he should also let us do something. That's, that's what they do. That's what they do. So, Prof, uh, just a little bit of um, sharing with you about how the media works. The problem you're having with this is that is this part. Whilst they were there, a journalist from among the group called a friend of mine, also a journalist, and informed him about the plot. Okay. Professor Bob, Bob Watson is, um, is focused on this as allegation because of the things that happened later on. And he alleges, he alludes to them. Let's see what he says. He says, he further informed my friend to watch out for headlines in some newspapers in the days following. On Monday, 10th February 2022, the informal newspaper, whose editor was at the meeting, had the banner headline on his front page and uh, produced as follows. Something about from Paul Bwati. We didn't print that one. As if that was not enough, on Thursday, 13th February 2020, at the 71st Cabinet meeting, Mr. Ponkroma, in his regular report to Cabinet, talked about news that was trending in the week. The first thing he mentioned was Frimpon Boati and 500 missing excavators. Now, what's, what's wrong with that? So, I, I think this is very serious. Eh? So, Professor Frimpon Boati was sitting in the cabinet. Somebody had called him that. They were doing a meeting at a forest, Dodoa Forest, a forest hotel in Dodoa. And I should look out for the headlines. He sees the headlines. He doesn't tell Opon Kruma anything. And I'll come to the Kukubaku. And he said Kukubaku called him directly. He doesn't talk, about, talk to Opon Kruma in the cabinet meeting about anything. Obama Kuma is briefing cabinet about media situation for, for this week. And then he says, Frimpon Boatin and the 500 missing excavators. But the Frimpon Boatin and the 500 missing excavators was an A1 story for the week that is broke. No information minister will look at the story for the week and, and skip that one. It was an A1 story, as we call it in the newsroom. It's an A1 story. Frimpon Boatin and missing excavators is an A1 story. So it will naturally be in the list of any information minister's portfolio when he's addressing his bosses about what has been happening in the week, it will be there. So, well, but he interprets that to mean that the call that came to him was a correct call. But let's move on. It must be noted that Mr. Paul Nkrumah, as Minister for Information, was a member of the IMCIM, and he never called me to find out what I knew about missing excavators, but he found it worthwhile to magnify it in press and also present the falsehood before cabinet for reasons best known to him and his co-conspirators. Wow, that's an interesting one. Okay, let's move on. If Kojo Ponkroma and the likes of him have presidential ambitions, they should pursue it on merit and not attempt to destroy a hard-working... Oh, but this, is, this sounds quite... Oh, I'm sorry. This, this doesn't sound well. Because, because you see, Professor Fimpon Boate is doing a work. He's been asked by chief of staff to do a report. In his report, he says that the, the work was undermined by some important people. He names them, Lord Komi, etc. He goes further to say that some journalists also uh, sort of affected his work. He names them Kukubako. Then he continues with some other members of government where he talks about Opon Krumah and, and the meeting they had and all of that. Then he comes to say Opon Krumah has presidential ambition. What has that got to do with the matter? You see, as soon as he goes there, as soon as the author of a document straddles away to something else, you have to begin to question his motive. You don't need camera. It's just analysis. You have to begin to question the motives of the minister. When he's writing a report about illegal mining and he's, he's uh, concerned about the behavior of the information minister and he's talking about, then he says that if the information minister wants us presidential, oh, presidential ambition from where? I mean, I don't get it. I really don't get it. You are writing your report. Deal with it. Opon Kuma was wrong. He had a meeting here. He came to cabinet. He makes a good point. He says Opon Kuma was part of the committee, but he didn't ask him about the report. We make the point that he also didn't ask Opon Krumah about it when he heard that they were doing meeting at uh, the Dodoa Forest Hotel. So there may be some problem between them. It happens all the time. We are human beings. So every now and then there will be a problem. But now to come and say that if Opon Krumah and the likes of him have... What, who is the likes of him? Who also has presidential ambition? They should pursue... What is, how do you pursue presidential ambition by reporting on what is happening in the Galamsey sector and saying that Frimpon Boatier and 500 SKB? Is that how you pursue your presidential ambition? Or is Frimpon Boatier suggesting that 
They want to take him out of the ambition so that they come in. They are different generations. Where Frank Pompati will run for president, Opon Kruma may not even be. He'll be in SSS. He can't run for president at the same time. Where Opon Kruma is running for president, Frank Pompati dare not come into that race. It will be lopsided. Opon Kruma will be something, he will be another age, 40 years difference. <laughs> that doesn't work. So this part, uh, with the greatest of respect, Prof, please take this part out. With the greatest of respect, it doesn't work. This somebody has presidential ambition is too bad. Take it out.